If the book's offered and the delta's offered and the tick's offered, the price really can't go up. There's nothing motivating the price to go up, is there? So when you start to recognize those elements, you know, if you look at uh, the oil at the top edge, for example, here, you can see that we had the tick still going higher. And obviously, when the tick's still going higher at this stage, what you're waiting for is you can see the book's been offered for some time. But obviously what starts to happen is you start to see the tick and the delta diverging in here. And obviously when that tick starts coming out here, usually the best thing to go is, the last thing to go is the book, but sometimes the book's already gone, right? Sometimes the book's already away. But here's a great example of the kind of trade that you can absolutely crystal clear recognize right there, do you see it? So what Reeves pointing out there is where the book is offered and the volume delta is offered and the tick delta is offered, Really, there's nothing for you to do there except sell it. Because nobody's buying it. Nobody's buying it. So in other words, there's a very high probability that that price will press off of that level. And that's not a, I mean, it's not a, it's a one minute chart, but it's not a chump change trade, is it? $72, uh, $75.32 traded a low print in that original swing of $75.12. That's a $200 winner right there in four minutes. Similar type story to the fresh air trade up here. Now that's not quite the same because obviously we do have a slight uptick, but you can see that it's all just about manipulation of price. A very, very easy short sale again coming into that as a storyline at higher prices on this occasion. And then it becomes just so straightforward. It's unbelievably easy, isn't it? So yeah, I mean, it is a very, very nice play to be looking for. And, uh, you know, when you spot it and you see it and you get used to it and you get to know the deal, yeah, absolutely. Because you don't know what's happening. The book might be very bid for a reason, but it might be all spoofs. The, might, the book might be very offered, but it might be all spoofs. The story and the relationship between the tick and the volume delta becomes incredibly valuable. You know, if the volume delta and the tick delta agree with each other, there's almost impossible, even if the book is bullish, it's even almost impossible for you to go against it. In fact, like Reeve mentioned on the example that he was talking about, it's actually better if the book is against you because what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring a buyer in. When they give up trying to bring a buyer in, the price drives lower. And that's where you really see the better opportunity starting to stand out when they try and bring the book back in. You saw an example of that at the bottom edge on the euro not that long ago. If you look at the bottom edge on the euro here, you can see the book in pink, but you can see the volume delta and the tick delta both driving higher here. So what the market maker was trying to do was, was trying to get a seller to come in just there. Do you see it? Market makers trying desperately to get somebody to sell into this. And you can see that the volume and the tick delta are diverging just that little bit. And as the volume and the tick delta diverge, but the book is dropping, of course, it's bringing some people into the short. You can see the open and the close of that candle is almost the same price, but you know that that's a fake. You know that's all fake. And because you know it's all fake, as soon as the market comes back in on the bid here, all you've got to do is then ride that north and you're almost guaranteed to make some beautiful cash. Just ride it north. And that's exactly how you trade these things. You know, what's not being said is that it's in line with value or against value or anything else. It's not a value trade, it's an order flow trade. If it's in line with value, so much more the better. If it's against value, then of course, there's a reason why it's happening. It might well be part of a pump and dump type setup. And therefore, we can recognize what's likely to happen next. And again, it's all part of that narrative building process. So that's what we're going to be talking a little bit about today in terms of uh, bonds. We're going to be looking at the narrative building process on bonds. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about the macro and that, and then we'll go back into the gold from the day before. So bonds, let's get started. 30 seconds, guys, so that Kim can start specifically a bond recording on this. 